Imagine a gate so significant that its ceiling was foretold by ancient prophets, and its opening is eagerly awaited by millions. A gate that symbolizes hope, prophecy, and divine intervention in the land of Israel. This gate has been sealed for centuries, yet it holds a story that challenges faith. It pushes the boundaries of history as we know it. So, what exactly is this gate's significance? Why was it sealed? And when will it be opened? Join us as we uncover the secret of the gate sealed in Israel till the second coming of Jesus. The Golden Gate, a symbol of history and prophecies. If we are to truly dive into the significance of this gate, then first we are to revisit history. The gate in question is none other than the Eastern Gate of Jerusalem, also known as the Golden Gate. Historically, this gate holds immense significance, both strategically and religiously, in the ancient city of Jerusalem. So, why was it sealed? And who exactly was the king that sealed it? The story takes us back to the 16th century, under the rule of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Sultan Sulman, in a strategic move that intrigued both historians and theologians alike, ordered the gate to be sealed. This order was not just a matter of defense or architecture, this was a decision that was deeply intertwined with religious beliefs and prophecies foretold. The sealing of the gate was more than just the closing of a physical passageway, no, far from it. This was an act that resonated through the annals of history, touching upon the beliefs and prophecies held sacred by many Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. For Christians, this act took on a prophetic significance, seen as a fulfillment of a biblical prophecy and a marker of future events foretold in Christian eschatology. As we delve deeper into this historical event, we begin to uncover the layers of its significance. The sealed gate is not just a relic of the past, it's a symbol that bridges history, prophecy, and faith. Early History of the Gate The Golden Gate is located in the northern third of the Temple Mount's eastern wall. The eastern wall now visible was built in at least four stages during the reign of Hezekiah, during the time of Zerubbabel in the Hasmonean period, and famously in the Herodian period. The present Golden Gate is thought to have been built on top of the ruins of an earlier gate in the Eastern Wall. An arch, most possibly of a former gate, lies directly beneath the blocked entranceway of the Golden Gate. The construction date of the present-day Golden Gate is unknown, as Muslim authorities forbid archaeological work at the Temple Mount. The vast majority of the 19th and early 20th century scholars such as Robinson, Condor, Bartlett, Vinson, and Abel, Melchior, de Vogue, and Cresswell dated the gate to different periods before the Islamic period. Later, in the light of developing research, new arguments have been advanced by many scholars such as Hamilton, Sharon, Bendov, Rosen Ayalon, Safrir, and Wilkinson that the gate should be dated to the 7th, 8th century AD to the Umayyad period. The sealing of the gate, closed by the Muslims in 810, and reopened in 1102 by the Crusaders. It was walled up by Saladin after regaining Jerusalem in 1187. Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent rebuilt it together with the city walls, but walled it up in 1541, and it stayed that way. During the Ottoman era, the inner recess built within the western side of the Golden Gate was used for brick burning, which bricks were then used to renovate buildings and structures in the Haram Esh Sharif, Temple Mount enclosure. A small mosque was built near the Golden Gate to cater to the brick burners, but it was later destroyed, along with part of the gate's wall, by order of the Sultan in the 19th century to make room for renovations. A new wall and two new arches were added to the gate's western interior. The gatehouse, which is accessed from the Temple Mount by descending a wide flight of stairs leading into it, and where the current ground floor is built in the shape of a rectangle measuring 24 meters, 79 FTX, 17 meters, 56 FT, exterior wall measurements, is surrounded by walls, the length of which space being divided by a row of columns forming two equal divisions. Below the ground level, inside a tomb, can be seen the top of an ancient arch, the lower stones still buried underground. 
the existence of which leads to the conclusion that the original ground level was much lower than what it is today. The Ottoman Turks transformed the walled-up gate into a watchtower. Description of the Golden Gate The Golden Gate is a rectangular stonework structure with two decorated facades. Unlike other gates in the Al-Aqsa enclave, the eastern facade was not built level with the wall of the enclave, but projects two meters out from the wall. The Golden Gate has two passages. The two bays are reflected in its plan and main elevations. Two doorways are followed by a double passage covered by three pairs of domes. On the ground floor level, a vaulted hall is divided by four columns into two aisles, which lead to the Door of Mercy, Bab al-Rahma, and the Door of Repentance, Bab al tauba An upper floor room has two roof domes as its ceiling. Originally, the eastern facade of the Golden Gate had two large doorways, separated by a column. Each doorway measures 3.90 meters in width, supporting a semicircular arch with a decorated frieze. The doorways in the eastern facade were blocked up in the Ottoman period. It is noticed that some features in the decoration of the Golden Gate bear a close resemblance to the decoration in other non-Muslim buildings that existed in the Levant. The openings of the Golden Gate lead to a rectangular domed vestibule, measuring 20.37 meters, 66.8 feet, in length, and 10.50 meters, 34.4 feet, in width, interior wall measurements. At that time, the hall consisted of six shallow domes, which had an elliptical shape, two of which were changed later. These domes are separated by arches of an elliptical shape, springing from two pilasters at the entrances and two central columns. Each dome in the Golden Gate is constructed over a square plan, so special stones are required to form the successive stone circles that form the dome. Architecturally, the spatial treatment of the gate is somewhat interesting. Shifting the facade two meters out of the wall indicates a clear definition of its location. The most important question concerning this gate is the matter of motive, significance, of the Eastern Gate to Christian belief. The Golden Gate was found in the East Wall of Jerusalem and represents strong prophetic evidence for the authenticity of the Bible. The Eastern Gate was just one of 11 entry gates into the city. Notice in the above photo that this gate is sealed shut. It was sealed up in the 16th century AD. Nevertheless, Ezekiel prophesied the shutting of this gate itself around 600 BC, that it would be shut because the Lord, Yahweh, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. Jesus went into Jerusalem through the East Gate around 30 AD, long before it was closed off by the Ottomans, as he came down from the Mount of Olives and went into the temple according to our understanding of Luke 19:28:48. He would have gotten in through the original gate in the wall, which was destroyed with the city by the Romans in 70 AD. Ezekiel states concerning this closed gate that the prince, which the Messiah is typically called throughout the Old Testament, and Jesus, as is called in the New Testament, will enter it once again. Jesus, having entered the city, said that he would not be seen again until Jerusalem acknowledges him in Matthew 23:37-39. The Eastern Gate is currently considered by the Arabs to be their special property. It is sealed up and blocked off. Nevertheless, one day, the Messiah will land on the Mount of Olives with all his saints and walk down to and right through the Eastern Gate and into the temple area. It also holds another significance to Christian culture. Honoring the Jewish tradition and inspired by apocryphal accounts of the life of the Virgin Mary, Medieval Christian artists depicted the relationship of Jesus' maternal grandparents, Joachim and Anne, meeting at the Golden Gate. The couple came to represent the Christian ideal of chastity in conjugal relations within marriage. The pious custom of a bridegroom carrying his bride across the threshold of their marital home may be based on the traditional symbolism of the Golden Gate to the faithful. In medieval art, the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception of the Mother of Christ was commonly depicted in images of the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne. In Italian, the Materza, the three generations of grandmother, mother, 
and sun. The metaphor also features heavily in the personalist phenomenology of Pope John Paul II, his Theology of the Body, a collection of reflections on this theme crossing the threshold of hope was written to encourage the Roman Catholic faithful facing the challenges of materialism and increasing secularism and published on the cusp of the new millennium in 1998. The threshold between the earthly and heavenly realms symbolized by the Golden Gate represents the mystical body of the Church, often viewed as the Bride of Christ. In Christian eschatology, Sunrise in the East symbolizes both Christ's resurrection at dawn on Easter Sunday and the direction of His Second Coming. Sanctuaries for Christian congregational worship at an altar are often arranged concerning the East. City gates in Christian urban centers often contain religious artifacts intended to guard the city against attacks and to bless travelers. The Ostra Brahma in Vilnius, Lithuania contains an icon of Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn, which is venerated by both Roman Catholic and Orthodox inhabitants. Let's take a look at the other gates of Israel. Damascus, Gate Bab al-Amud. On the northwest wall is the Damascus Gate Bab al-Amud, built 1536-38, which Ottoman court architect Sinan is said to have personally designed. It faced the Syrian capital, and the road leading out from it led to Damascus, hence the name in English. It is the largest and most magnificent of the gates, and it stands at the lowest geographic point in the old city. It was built on the remains of a gate from Roman times. The Arabic name means Gate of the Pillar, which derives from the Roman and Byzantine periods when a tall pillar stood in the middle of the plaza outside the original gate. This was a Roman victory column, topped by the image of Emperor Hadrian. The pillar served as the zero point for measuring the distance between Jerusalem and other nearby cities. Bab al-Amud is the only gate that retained its original name during the Ottoman reconstruction of the wall. This gate is also sometimes called Bab al-Nazar in Arabic, the gate of victory. It is the main gate Palestinians use to enter the old city and the plaza around the Damascus Gate is a central community touchpoint. Outside the gate is a road leading to Nablus. Entering the old city through the gate, to the right is the Christian quarter, and to the left is the Muslim quarter, Herod's Gate, Bab al-Zahra. Moving east, one reaches the smallish Herod's Gate, Bab al-Zahra in Arabic, or Gate of Flowers, built 1537-38. Herod's Gate leads to the neighborhoods of al Sadia and Bab Hitta in the Muslim quarter and connects it to the Bab al-Zahra neighborhood outside the wall. On the internal facade of the gate, decorative Islamic art motifs are visible. The Arabic name, Bab al-Zahra, refers to these motifs. The English name comes from European pilgrims who mistook the gate for a place associated with Herod Antipas. Despite the error, the name stuck. Lion's Gate, Bab al-Asbat. Rounding the corner and walking along the eastern wall of the old city, one comes to the Lion's Gate, Bab al-Asbat, next to Al-Ghazali Square. This ancient gate goes by many names. Another Arabic name, Bab Sitna Maryam, Gate of Our Lady Mary, refers to the gate's proximity to the Hannah Church, where Christians believe the Virgin Mary was born. Coptic. Christians refer to it as St. Stephen's Gate, after the legend that the first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, was stoned to death outside this gate, although accounts vary. Jerusalemites call it Sheep Gate or Jericho Gate. Built in 1538-39, it leads directly to the Muslim quarter and is the closest gate to Al-Aqsa Mosque. This gate also serves as the main access point outward from the old city to the two main Muslim cemeteries outside the walls, the northern Bab al-Rahma Cemetery and the southern Yusufiya Cemetery. Heading inwards into the old city, it is the main entrance through which Muslims enter the Al-Aqsa compound to pray in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Carved into the wall above the gate are four lions, two on the left and two on the right. Sultan Suleiman had the carving made to celebrate the Ottoman defeat of the Mamluks in 1517. Legend has it that Suleiman's predecessor and father, Selim Mithfors, 
dreamed of lions that were going to eat him because of his plans to level the city. He was spared only after promising to protect the city by building a wall around it. This led to the lion becoming the heraldic symbol of Jerusalem. However, the Lion's Gate predates Ottoman times and is the only gate to the old city that has been open since it was founded, Dung Gate, Bab al Magariba. The southeast end of the old city is accessed through the Dung Gate, also called Silwan Gate, since it faces the Palestinian neighborhood, formerly the village of Silwan to the city's south, or, in Arabic, Bab al Magariba, the Moroccan Gate or Gate of the Moors. Considered the back door of the old city, this gate, built 1540-41, provided access to the old city's Jewish and Magyariba quarters. The latter was destroyed within days of the 1967 war to enlarge the Jewish quarter. The Libel Dung Gate might have come from the translation of a Hebrew word for garbage. In days long gone, people tossed their garbage through this gate to the Valley of Hinnom to be burned. The Dung Gate is the main passageway for vehicles coming out of the old city and for buses going to the Western Wall, which lies to the right just inside the gate. Also inside the gate is the Jerusalem Archaeological Park, also known as the Ophel Garden, which has open-air exhibits of archaeological and architectural finds from all eras of Jerusalem including the remains of some previously unrecognized early Islamic edifices. Zion Gate, Bab Harat El Yehud, Zion Gate, Bab Harat El Yehud, Arabic for the Gate of the Jews Quarter, built in 1540, is located in the southwestern part of the wall. It is also called in Arabic Bab al Nabi Dawud, the Gate of the Prophet David. Leaving the city, Zion Gate provides access to Mount Zion. Entering the city, Zion Gate leads straight into the Armenian Quarter. The gate is high and large compared to other gates. In the second half of the 19th century, a leper colony, livestock market, and slaughterhouse were located near the gate. As seen here, it still bears the visible scars of the 1948 war when the Palmach forces dynamited it during their failed attempts to conquer the old city and liberate the besieged Jews who were trapped in the Jewish quarter. Ultimately, they retreated and the old city remained on the Jordanian side of the city until the 1967 war. Jaffa Gate, Bab al-Khalil. Jaffa Gate, also called Hebron Gate, which is its Arabic name Bab al-Khalil, also meaning Gate of the Friend, was built in 1538, the second largest of the gates, is located in the middle of the western wall of the city and faces Bethlehem and Hebron to the south and Jaffa to the west, hence its various names. The road leading westward away from this gate and the city led to Jaffa, a major port city, hence its name, Jaffa Road. In Arabic, this gate is also sometimes called the Bab Mihrab Daoud, Gate of the Prayer Niche of David. The Tower of David, an ancient citadel first built in the second century, stands nearby. Dignitaries and conquerors alike used this gate, but so did people arriving by horse carriage, bus, or railway. The gate was conveniently located near transportation hubs, when the railroad was built in the early 20th century, this route became a major one for pilgrims visiting the holy city. In the second half of the 19th century, catering to this traffic, a host of services, markets, hotels, coffee shops, photography shops, and other businesses, was located just outside Jaffa Gate. Inside Jaffa Gate was the citadel from where the governor of Jerusalem ruled, entering the gate, the Armenian quarter lies to the right and the Christian quarter to the left. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is nearby. In 1898, the low-lying section of wall next to Jaffa Gate was opened. That section of the Crusader moat was filled and a road was paved to allow the entourage of the visiting German Emperor, Kaiser Wilhelm II, to enter the city comfortably and in style. In 1907, a 25-meter-high clock tower of white limestone was built atop the gate on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of Sultan Abdul Hamid's accession to power. However, the British later dismantled it. In 1917, this was the gate through which the conquering British army entered the city and declared its military occupation of it. 
In 1948, the Haganah fought hard to try and take this gate, which would have connected the old city and the Jewish quarter therein to the western side of the city that they held, but they failed. This gate remained on the Jordanian-held side of the city until 1967. New Gate, Bab al-Jadid. A gate on the northwestern side, the New Gate Bab al-Jadid, was opened in 1889 to create access between the Christian quarter and new neighborhoods being established beyond the old city walls. It was built in 1887 during the rule of Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II, and with his permission, at the request of European powers and Christian institutions, to make it easier to access the growing new city neighborhoods just outside the walls, such as Musrara from the Christian quarter. The new gate was intended to reduce traffic at the other gates. The Notre Dame de France, the most prominent Catholic landmark in the city, is across the street from this gate. Other places in Israel hold both historical and prophetic significance in Israel, and one of them is the Western Wall. The Western Wall, otherwise known by the West as the Wailing Wall, and in Islam as the Barak Wall. The Western Wall is a portion of ancient limestone wall in the old city of Jerusalem that forms part of the larger retaining wall of the hill known to Jews and Christians as the Temple Mount. Just over half the wall's total height, including its 17 courses located below street level, dates from the end of the Second Temple period and is believed to have been begun by Herod the Great. The very large stone blocks of the lower courses are Herodian. The courses of medium-sized stones above them were added during the Umayyad period, while the small stones of the uppermost courses are of more recent date, especially from the Ottoman period. The Western Wall plays an important role in Judaism due to its proximity to the Temple Mount. Because of the Temple Mount entry restrictions, the Wall is the holiest place where Jews are permitted to pray outside the previous Temple Mount platform, as the presumed site of the Holy of Holies, the most sacred site in the Jewish faith, lies just behind it. The original, natural, and irregular-shaped Temple Mount was gradually extended to allow for an ever-larger temple compound to be built at its top. The earliest source mentioning this specific site as a place of Jewish worship is from the 17th century. The term Western Wall and its variations are mostly used in a narrow sense for the section of the wall used for Jewish prayer and called the Wailing Wall, referring to the practice of Jews weeping at the site. During the period of Christian Roman rule over Jerusalem, Jews were completely barred from Jerusalem, except on Tisha B'Av, the day of national mourning for the temples. In religious terms, the Little Western Wall is presumed to be even closer to the Holy of Holies and thus to the presence of God and the underground Warren's Gate, which has been out of reach for Jews from the 12th century till its partial excavation in the 20th century. In Islam, the Western Wall is also of importance. The Western Wall constitutes the western border of Al-Haram al-Sharif, the Noble Sanctuary, or the Al-Aqsa compound. It is believed to be the site where the Islamic prophet Muhammad tied his winged steed, the Barak, on his night journey to Jerusalem before ascending to paradise. While the wall was considered an integral part of the Haram es Sharif and Waqf property of the Moroccan quarter under Muslim rule, a rite of Jewish prayer and pilgrimage has long existed as part of the status quo. With the rise of the Zionist movement in the early 20th century, the wall became a source of friction between the Jewish and Muslim communities, the latter being worried that the wall could be used to further Jewish claims to the Temple Mount and thus Jerusalem. During this period, outbreaks of violence at the foot of the wall became commonplace, with a particularly deadly riot in 1929 in which 133 Jews and 116 Arabs were killed, with many more people injured. After the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, the eastern portion of Jerusalem was occupied by Jordan. Under Jordanian control, Jews were completely expelled from the old city, including the Jewish quarter and Jews were barred from entering the old city for 19 years, effectively banning Jewish prayer at the site of the Western Wall. This period ended on June 10, 1967, when Israel gained control of the site following the Six-Day War. 
three days after establishing control over the Western Wall site, the Moroccan quarter was bulldozed by Israeli authorities to create space for what is now the Western Wall Plaza. In 2011, Israeli archaeologists announced the surprising discovery of Roman coins minted well after Herod's death found under the foundation stones of the wall. The excavators came upon the coins inside a ritual bath that predates Herod's building project, which was filled in to create an even base for the wall and was located under its southern section. This seems to indicate that Herod did not finish building the entire wall by the time of his death in 4 BCE. The find confirms the description by historian Josephus Flavius which states that construction was finished only during the reign of King Agrippa II, Herod's great-grandson. Herod's temple was destroyed by the Romans, along with the rest of Jerusalem, in 70 CE, during the First Jewish-Roman War. After the Roman defeat of the Bar Kokhba revolt in 135 CE, Jews were banned from Jerusalem. There is some evidence that Roman emperors in the 2nd and 3rd centuries did permit them to visit the city to worship on the Mount of Olives and sometimes on the Temple Mount itself. When the empire started becoming Christian under Constantine the First, they were permitted to enter the city once a year on the Tisha B'Av to lament the loss of the temple at the wall. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos before you leave.